The Michelson-Morley experiment, probably the most famous null result in all of physics. While the actual experiment will be later treated on another day, what we have is light headed toward a beam splitter which will be split up about 50% to the upper mirror and about 50% to the side mirror. The light will reflect off each of the mirrors, return to the beam splitter, where it will recombine and head toward the screen, creating an interference pattern. The end result of the experiment is that everyone must measure the speed of light to be the same, regardless of their frame of reference. We are going to consider a clock. It's going to be a very basic clock, and the clock is going to be at rest with respect to an observer. This clock is going to run by emitting a flash of light, which will travel straight up, strike a mirror, reflect back down, and then travel back to the emitter, which will detect it and count the time. Because we have a distance L, the time that it's going to take delta T naught is equal to 2L divided by C. We're now going to consider what happens if we take our observer and move our observer to a different location relative to the clock. In this case, it's not going to make much difference, but if we give the clock a push, we're going to have a dramatic difference. So the clock behaves as before, it sends up its flash of light. But because V is fairly large, we have that the mirror has actually moved over to the right. So no longer does the flash of light that goes straight up travel to the mirror. But that's okay, because light is a wave. And so therefore, as it travels as a wave, we're going to have the wave front is going to arrive at the mirror. We know by the law of reflection that theta i is going to equal theta r. So the light will bounce off the mirror and travel down to the detector, which has continued to travel to the right. And so we're going to have is that the entire clock is going to have traveled to the right, some distance, v delta t. The distance between the mirror and the emitter is still going to be L. And because light is traveling at the speed of light, we're going to see that this leg of the triangle is C delta t over 2, and we have V delta t over 2. At this point, with the right angle triangle, we're left with Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to have C delta t over 2 squared is equal to L squared plus V delta t over 2 all squared. At this point, we can work out Einstein's result with just a little bit of algebra. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to square everything that's inside the brackets. We then notice that there's a 4 in the denominator of two of the terms, so we multiply both sides by 4, just to clean things up a little bit. At this point, we collect our delta t squared, and then we saw isolate delta t squared by dividing both sides by c, mi c squared minus v squared. We can now take the square root of 4L squared over c squared minus v squared, which is going to give us 2L over the square root of c squared minus v squared. Now the next step actually cleans things up a little bit, although it might not look like it at first. So we have 2L over the square root of c squared multiplied by 1 minus v squared over c squared. We realize that we can take the square root of c squared, so we're left with 2L over c multiplied by 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. But we've previously seen that 2L over c is delta t naught. So we're left with our final expression, delta t is equal to delta t naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. But we're all talking about the same thing here. It's the exact same clock. The only thing that's changed is the observer and the relative motion of the clock with respect to the observer. And yet this has a profound impact on how we measure time. So our observer that's moving with the clock is going to measure what we call proper time, delta t naught. Our observer at rest, with respect to the clock, as the clock moves by, is going to measure the dilated time. And it turns out that delta t naught is not going to equal delta t.